Hey everyone, today I want to talk about 10 simple changes that I feel, if added to Forza Horizon 5, would make it a much better game. Now before we start, I've got to say that simple is a funny word when it comes to game development, so I want to be clear that these changes are mostly meant to be simple in concept, even if they aren't technically simple to implement into the game. Alright, let's jump in with the first change, and it's one I've been very vocal about in the past, and am seriously surprised didn't come with Horizon 5's release. More basic arrow. We've been using the same Forza arrow since Horizon 2. I cannot believe the Forza Splitter and Rear Wing haven't been touched in 8 years and across 4 games. Horizon 5 touted so much more customization, and even before its release, we saw in GT7 that they had customizable rear wings, and I thought it was going to be a guarantee that Horizon 5 would add something similar. Or even just have multiple options to pick from, kind of like the BCL wing we got on a small handful of cars. I mean, even Gran Turismo 4 had more wing styles, and that's 18 years old. Take a look at how rear wing customization works in Gran Turismo. This is available on pretty much every single production car in the game. You can pick from three different risers and wing styles, low, medium, or high, and then pick from 25 different end plates. And this is on top of the other wing styles that are usually available for any car. So you have so many choices and so much freedom when customizing your build. Technically speaking, most cars in GT7 have access to over 75 total different wing styles, if you're including every combination of parts. In Horizon, a game that should promote modding and freedom of expression and uniqueness in your builds, we get one default wing per car. I'm not sure if Playground is just dead set on using real manufacturer parts instead of custom Forza stuff, but even then, how is it possible that we get piles of new clothing items every single month when most players would instead love to see new aero and body kits each month? Hopefully it seems like that's something they're starting soon, but for now, there are over 40 dresses you can wear in Horizon 5, and basically one default rear wing. So I would love to see a few things. Either make a GT7 style system where we can build our own rear wing, or even just make 3 or 4 more default options for all cars to choose between. Again, kind of like the BCL wing we got for a few cars. The payoff for players would be massive. And for front arrow, by the way, I don't even need that much. I would like to see the ability to remove the tow hook or even paint it a different color, and maybe even remove or change the side canards if possible. Maybe give us just one single other lip style. I don't think it would take a lot, and I really don't think players need too much, but I would love to see better Forza arrow. And that is my first simple change. Now, here's another one I'm shocked didn't make it into Horizon 5. Better car sorting in the garage. This is a game with over 600 cars now, and more being added every week. We often have duplicates and multiple tuning setups for the same car, and effectively all we can do is add them to one single custom list. Favorites. We have no official way of knowing what's a drift build, rally build, or road build. The tire compound marker was probably supposed to help with that, but it's very common to see things like rally and drift tires on road cars, drag or snow tires on drift cars, and stock or off-road tires on rally cars. So showing us what compound is on a car is not nearly as helpful as it should be. I've resorted to just using my favorites for online racing builds, as it helps me narrow down what I can pick from when you only have 30 or 40 seconds to make a choice. There are two things I'd like to see here. One, give us our own symbol tags that we can attach to a car. Something simple like shapes would work. You could, for example, tag cars with a star icon or circle or triangle, whatever, some set of maybe 10 to 12 basic tags so that we can further sort and categorize our cars. The other thing I would love to see is the ability to give our cars nicknames. And this could work a few different ways, but I think the simplest way to implement this would be to show the name of the tune in the selection window. This means if it's our own tune, we could obviously name it whatever we want, but even if we use a downloaded tune, we'd have a better idea of what the car is built for. Like I said, this was something I was sure would be in Horizon 5 at launch, 
But hey, better late than never, this would be an amazing feature to have added at some point post-launch. All right, now for the next one, this is a commonly discussed topic and something I was kind of on the fence about personally until I realized what I think is an incredibly simple solution. This fix is about improving the livery editor. There are, realistically, a lot more specific fixes that could fit into this very broad category, but I really only have one main suggestion. Creators should be able to unlock their creations for reuse and resharing by others. If you don't know already, using someone else's decals in your own livery restricts it from being reshared by you. This is smart, because it prevents people from stealing work and sharing it as their own. But that choice should be up to the players. Because, for example, if someone wants to create a livery that uses, say, a Castrol logo, well, first, they have to make that logo from scratch by themselves. Even one logo, done properly, can take hours. But if you've seen most race cars, you can see that they often are plastered with dozens of logos on top of the actual car design, and it takes many hours of painstaking work to accurately recreate each and every one of those decals. And that's made even worse by the fact that each and every person has to start over from scratch. So any creator that wants to share a livery with a Castrol logo in it has to make that logo by themselves. If players had the ability to unlock their decals, you could just download the high-quality Castrol logo made by someone else and put it on your car without preventing your livery from being shared. This would, of course, be extremely helpful for livery creators because it would save them hours of time. It would also be beneficial to anyone using the livery because this process would encourage higher quality and more accurate decals to be used, instead of just making something close enough because the creator has 12 more decals to make before they can even start the actual car design. And of course, finally, it would benefit the decal creator themselves, because it would encourage more downloads and creators could make whole sticker packs to be shared across the community. If you want to see higher quality liveries and Forza, there are a lot of ways to do it. Make the creator tools more robust, allow image importing, etc. But those each come with significant amounts of dev time and potential risks. Allowing creators to unlock their creations for resharing is a theoretically simple fix that would lead to vastly improve livery quality across the board and save creators so much time. Let's stay on the creator theme here and talk about photo and video options. Horizon's photo mode and replay video editor haven't really changed much in years, and it's high time we got some upgrades to both. Forza photography is a huge scene, and there is a laundry list of changes I'm sure we would all love to see to the photo mode. Things like being able to change the time of day or weather, resetting props or destructibles, removing PR stunt flags, shooting in 4K no matter the resolution you play on, allowing photo mode in multiplayer event labs. The list goes on, and I'm sure every Fort photographer has their own wish list, so I won't speak on this one too much specifically, because I think we've all found at least one or two things that we wish were in the photo mode. For videos though, this one speaks closer to me as a Forza video content creator. We can't use drone or free cams in replays, we can't use the drone in event labs, the UI for selecting the camera actions are clunky, and we can only record small chunks of unique camera action video in the open world due to the limit of the rewind feature. Having better videography features benefits everyone. We all know that in today's world, games are often marketed, either intentionally or unintentionally, through social media platforms like YouTube, Reddit, Instagram, TikTok, or whatever else. If the people creating the content can produce higher quality content with better in-game photo and video tools, the creators win by having higher quality content and being able to make content easier. The viewers win by being able to see higher quality content, and let's be honest, the game devs win because better photo and video tools make their game look better and genuinely would generate more sales. Now let's keep this creator-focused fixes train going and talk about the next change I would like to see in the event lab. Now this is another one like with the previous suggestion for better photo and video tools, 
where if you've spent enough time with Event Lab, you probably have your own laundry list of things you want to see fixed or added. Things like snapping across all props and grid placement, better camera tools, locking tunes and deliveries to Event Lab car selection, just more props in general, better rules, and so on. And I agree with all those things, but here is honestly what I think is truly missing, and what would be easier to fix within Event Lab. Better discovery and sorting. Most players have no idea that incredible Event Lab maps, like the ones I'm showing on screen, even exist. There's not a lot that pushes players towards the feature, and the weekly festival playlist event is often not the best advertisement. It seriously breaks my heart knowing how many Horizon players have quit or gotten bored of the game, never knowing that creators like Twisted Knot, Vuku, or Joe C exist, and are constantly producing incredibly high quality new experiences for Horizon 5. So for one, I think the feature needs to be pushed more, and players more encouraged to spend their time in custom event labs after completing the main game experience. But that comes with a catch. Like I said, the feature needs better sorting and discoverability. Right now, if you search for event labs, most of what you will find will be low effort skill point and credit grind maps that can usually be AFK'd, racking up their play count to insane numbers and ensuring that they always stay at the top of the list. This is, quite frankly, not what I think players should be seeing when they look into Event Lab. Even if you manually search, let's say for a map to drift on with friends, the searching and tagging features are fairly lackluster, and it's really hard to know if a map will be worth checking out without actually loading into it first, which, especially for older console players or people with slower hard drives, is a choice that can take many minutes. I want to be able to view and sort through dozens of maps quickly and easily to find the map I want to play. I think one of the best ways to do this is to let creators choose their own cover photo instead of these pre-generated ones. This would give players a great quick look into what the map looks like, how prop dense it is, how high quality it's built, or if it's the type of event they're looking for. This, although simple in concept, may be quite difficult in its execution though. That aside, I still feel there are plenty of other methods out there to help push higher effort creations to the top. All right, now let's change gears and talk about online. One of the biggest points of discussion when it comes to Horizon 5 and what should be changed. This is one you've probably all heard before, so I won't overly rehash what's been said a million times, but for starters, we should have better sorting for Horizon Open. This image that was shared before we even had custom adventure at all is perfect. There's just no excuse for the fifth iteration of a AAA game with millions of online players to have such bare bones online functionality. This is for many players the end game of Horizon, what they'll be spending hundreds of hours playing, and we should all have more choice when it comes to our online experience. Additionally, ranked. I don't believe Ranked will come to Horizon 5, Playground has made a very conscious decision to remove it, and it's honestly hard to argue with their reasoning. Ranked Online can be toxic, and without a near-perfect penalty system, it can be extremely frustrating. But the solution was not to remove Ranked, because all that's done is move the toxicity into the rest of Online, instead of at least keeping a more dedicated casual mode. Adding a good Ranked system back to Horizon is no easy task, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be done. There are two simple changes that might help create a positive Ranked Online. One is a safety rating system, like you have in Gran Turismo. Safe drivers get paired with other safe drivers, and rammers get paired with rammers. This would have to be implemented well, but if done right, would of course be quite helpful. Second, have a better report system. If you don't know already, ramming and griefing are against Forza's guidelines. Let players report rammers easily, have a manual review process, and ban people who intentionally ruin other players' races. Finally, for online fixes, I think the checkpoint system could use a rework. Currently, if you're pushed out of a checkpoint, it can ruin your whole race. For me, there's a simple solution. I think there should be a small radius around all checkpoints where instead of being forced to reset or rewind, you're simply given a big slowdown, in the same way that you would with a wall hit. There is some possibility of exploitation here, especially if not implemented well, 
but even a big slowdown would be more fair than waiting 5 seconds to reset at a checkpoint at a dead stop, or rewinding for multiple seconds to hopefully make the checkpoint on the next attempt. After all, if Horizon is meant to be the more casual racer, which it is, you shouldn't be penalized so harshly for missing a checkpoint by an inch because you got pushed out by another driver that cut inside a bit too much. Alright, now I've got three more changes that I think would make a big impact on Horizon, and these ones are a bit more broad or a bit more challenging in their scope. The first one I'll talk about here is bug fixes. Forza Horizon 5, even now, some nine months after launch, is still a buggy game. I regularly run into issues with online convoys, rivals times sometimes don't save, many players still deal with poor performance, memory leaks, and crashes, many event lab custom rules don't work how they should, the list goes on and on, and every time Playground takes two steps forward on fixing something, it seems like they also take a step back. Unfortunately, Horizon 5 has been Forza's buggiest release, and although I absolutely gave them a lot of slack and the benefit of the doubt closer to launch, some bigger bugs have been around far too long and are still really frustrating. Issues like this erode trust in the brand. So, not much else to say about this one. I'd like the game to be more polished, especially when it comes to a smoother multiplayer experience. And speaking of the multiplayer experience, clubs need an overhaul. Again, this doesn't quite fit in the category of small fixes, however it definitely would make a big change. And the reason I'm putting it in this video still is because we actually used to have a better club system in Horizon 3. They've done it before. Clubs could level up, there were better leaderboards, club-specific ladders, weekly and daily club goals, and even an in-game space for daily messages or more information about the club. Clubs actually used to mean something, and made you feel like you were part of something. These days, they're barely good for anything more than club-specific rivals leaderboards. There is no real endgame community feeling to clubs because it's all done outside the game on the Xbox interface or third-party tools like Discord. This is something I would assume Playground has to implement as a first-party Xbox title, but to be honest, it sucks, and I would love to have something like Horizon 3's club system back, or even something better. You know, give us an in-game clubhouse or something where we can see other players' cars and have a club achievement and reward system. Social features like that keep players invested in the game. Now, finally, to end our list, I want to talk about the evolving world. This is a feature that drew a lot of interest to a lot of players, me included. If you don't know, this is the feature new to Horizon 5 where the world changes over time or based on specific events. For example, the evolving world brought us the stunt park in the stadium as well as the ice rink. It also gave us the Christmas decorations all around Mulahe and the Chinese lanterns around the Chinese New Year. It's the same evolving world feature that also gives us new or temporary PR stunts. Some world changes have been better or more extensive than others, but I feel, especially lately, that this feature has been criminally underused. I mean, Playground has this chance, this opportunity to constantly evolve and change Horizon 5's world to keep things fresh for returning players. But unfortunately, the way things are now, most evolving world changes are so minimal that they often go unnoticed by most of the player base. I think this feature could be utilized to add things like gas stations to the map or parking garages, to renovate buildings or even mix up the festival sites on a semi-regular basis. Maybe they could even add more player housing, give us new routes to race on, and add those to the Horizon Open Championships to keep that fresh and ever-changing. This is a feature with so much potential, and I understand that maybe the devs are heads down working on the next DLC or the rest of the updates that we do get for free every month, but I really hope that sometime soon there's more focus put on the evolving world and it starts to evolve a little bit more. And guys, that is going to do it for the 10 small changes that I think would make a huge impact on Horizon 5. 
With these types of videos, I often get somewhat nervous that they come off perhaps a bit too harsh, so I do just want to insert a disclaimer here that I love this game. I wouldn't play it or cover it on my channel if I didn't. I critique because I care. I want to see the game be the best it can be, and I want to see the players enjoying the best possible game. And if there's something simple that you would like to see added to Horizon 5 that wasn't in this list, let me know in the comments. I kind of want to have a running simple feature list going so that perhaps it's easier for playground games to see what the players, at least in this community, truly want in Horizon. So with that said, thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next.